Do we have one of our other elementary counselors with us? I'll go. Hi, guys. This is Miss Cotton from Peach Creek, and I'm so excited to see all of my Peach Creek families on here. Um, I hope you get a lot of information um, from tonight, but if you have any questions, um, please reach out, and I'm excited um, to see what happens in the future. And this is Miss Porterpan. I'm excited to welcome my sixth grade students as well. You guys have been doing a great job. I'm so proud of you. Y'all are going to be in great hands with Miss White and Miss Garcia. And so I'm going to pass it over to Miss White. Thank you so much, Miss Porter Pan. All right, let's go to Timberlakes Elementary, Miss T. Oh, good, uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Parent Information Night. I'm Ms. Turubiate, and I am a school counselor for Timber Lakes Elementary. Along with the rest of our school counselors, I'd like to thank you for being here tonight. If you have any questions at a later date, please feel free to email me or call me. Now I'll leave you in the hands of Mrs. White and Mrs. Garcia. Uh, thank you so much, ladies, and thank you so much for being a part of this. Um, you know, we, 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 we have a great team. I just, just thank you from the bottom of my heart. And also at the junior high, you know, speaking of a good, a great team, we have an exceptional administrative team here at the junior high. It consists of Mr. Bruce Ard, our assistant principal. At the junior high, there are two counselors, myself, Ms. White, and I'm the counselor for students whose last names begin with the letters A through K. And then we have Ms. Garcia. She is the counselor for students whose last names begin with the letters L through Z. We also have our instructional specialist, Ms. Molly Buford, programs facilitator, Ms. Patricia Tillery, and a math specialist. Her name is Patty McAnally. At this time, we are going to hear from our principal, Mr. Broussard. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Mr. Broussard. Thank you very much, Ms. White. Students and parents, we are excited to welcome you into Splendor Junior High starting next year. We look forward to the great things that you're going to bring to us and the opportunities that we have to um, help you learn and continue your education, not only academically, but socially and athletically, musically, um, all different sorts of ways that we're going to have opportunities for you to grow and develop um, in your academics and in your school career here in Splendor ISD. I'm exceptionally uh, excited to have all of you join us next year and look forward to the opportunity to meet each one of you and have some time with your parents later on. So welcome. If you have any questions, don't forget, please email us and we will gladly get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you and enjoy the evening. Thank you much Mr. Broussard and once again please know that we are here to help you so don't hesitate to reach out to any one of us on this administrative team and we are all here to help. Tonight's goal and objective is to reduce your level of anxiety about the junior high school about this transition process. We're going to give you information tools and resources to help make this a successful transition we're gonna talk about the course selection process and um, we'll give you some contact information at the end. But remember, as we travel this road, that this is a process we go through together because we want your child to be successful here at the junior high. So with this transition to junior high, please know that it is normal for you and for your child to be nervous about coming to junior high. I mean, after all, this is a brand new campus for your child to come to. Um, but like I said before, we are here to help. And we want this to be an exciting time for your child. I have included in this presentation a surviving and thriving in junior high tips sheet. That is a link that um, whenever it becomes live, you can come back to this site. And when you click on that, it will um, become a link that you can go back and look at that at your own leisure. But it does give some tips on surviving and thriving at the junior high. 
Tonight, I'm going to be going over three areas of concern. And then, as a parent, I'm going to talk about what you can do to help your child be successful as they navigate their journey down this road to success. So the first area of concern is procedural concerns or the way that we do things here at the junior high. And some of these concerns might look like your child um, being concerned that they might get lost or how do they find their classes. After all, it's a new campus. So how am I going to find my classes? Um, where are the restrooms? I mean, believe it or not, that is very important. And, and if, you know, they need to know where to go when they need to go. So knowing where the restrooms are is a huge concern. And when can they go to the restrooms? Um, there also could be concerns about, you know, that I'm going to have all these classes. I'm going to have all these books. How am I going to handle the books? How do I get from one class to the other without being late? And how do I know what? on what day. And in our cafeteria, it might seem larger. Um, and so they're going to be in a cafeteria probably with more students. Um, and, you know, currently this year, because of COVID, we have had to um, extend our cafeteria area. So we actually have two locations where students are eating. And so that, that could be a concern that your child has. So we want you to be aware of those things. But as a parent, what you can do to help your child is um, is make to bring them to the scheduled pickup day. We're going to have a specially um, designed day for incoming seventh graders. Um, think of it as an orientation day for for incoming seventh graders. They're going to get their schedule. They're going to um, tour the campus. They're going to get to practice their schedule. And so, and some of the things like, like the rules and some of these procedural concerns that they had, um, they will be answered. And um, guys, we are, like I said, we're here to help. And please know at the beginning of school, I mean, the, we have people stationed to help them find their classes. So we do everything we can to the best of our ability up front to help um, alleviate this particular concern. Um, another thing that we have here at the junior high is we are on block scheduling. So our classes are an hour and a half long, and the hour and a half classes are on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But on Friday, we have a traditional schedule that's 45, the classes are 45 minutes each. So on Monday and Wednesday, those will be our odd number classes. So on their schedule, it would be their first, third, fifth and seventh period. Then on Tuesday and Thursdays, that would be the even number classes. So they would go to their second, fourth, sixth, and eighth period classes. But then on Friday, they, it's a, like I said, it's a traditional schedule. They would go one through eight. Also parents, one thing to consider is that when you do go to purchase your child a backpack, if you, um, if you choose to do so, um, we ask that you do not buy one that will hold 50 pounds of materials um, because um, they will pack that backpack and they will hold on to lots of papers and lots of things will be packed inside that backpack. And we don't, we don't want them to, because that is very heavy and there's really no need for them to have a very large backpack at the junior high. Um, the smaller backpacks do allow for better organization because they can't keep packing stuff and keeping old stuff inside. So please consider that whenever you do go to purchase a backpack if you choose to do so. Um, in addition to that, our transition time between our class periods, it is four minutes. And I know four minutes may not seem like a long time, however, it is plenty of time to walk from one side of the campus all the way to the other side and to even to go to the restroom. So even though it's four minutes, it's still, there's plenty of time to be able to move from one class to the next. The second concern is that of academics. Your child may be very concerned about, you know, how am I going to continue to have good grades? They may be used to making straight A's and, and high A's and they, that could be a concern because they're going to have eight teachers. There's going to be um, homework, long-term projects. Um, it may be um, that the, the 
teachers, you know, with eight teachers, there may be um, the expectations are going to be different. So, I mean, so just be aware that these are some concerns and this may be the first time that your child might actually get a B. So students are concerned about the academics. As a parent, what you can do is we want you to be the example. Show the importance of education to them. Um, ask them about their day. Ask questions, you know, like what they learned. Um, ask more specific questions, not just general. Like if you say, you know, did you have a good day? I mean, they're going to say yes. So be more specific. Like, what did you learn today in English? Um, what homework do you have? What, you know, how did that test go that you took? So ask them more specific questions. Did you meet anybody today? Um, just be more specific and that will show that you are taking an, a, more of an investment in their education and what they're um, learning about. Set aside some quiet space and time for your child to study and to do their homework. We want them to be actively involved and engaged in um, extracurricular activities. We want them to have that playtime, but tr make sure to try to help them help them balance that school and the playtime. And it helps if they have a quiet place, a designated area where they can go and do their homework. Um, set high but reachable expectations for your child. Encourage them. Encourage them to do their best. Like I said, this is might be the first time that your child may be um, having facing some more difficult with um, academics because of the more advanced classes. But please just encourage them to do their best and check their grades in Skyward and teach them how to check their grades in Skyward. It's an important learning time for them. And if they become used to going and checking the grades themselves, that will help them become more responsible. And please know that we do have tutorials available at the junior high. Um, there will be a schedule posted. And um, just know that we do have tutor tutorials before school, after school, and then even during our win time, um, if there's a, uh, something that comes up and a teacher uh, needs to work with a student, they will schedule time. All right, the third concern that I want to speak to you about is social emotional concern. Making friends and connecting with a peer group. Guys, friends is a huge concern at this, at this age because, like I said before, we have four campuses coming together in one. So there's going to be a larger group of students in their particular grade. And so we do see that the students, that this is a major area of concern. So something we want you to be prepared for in advance so you can help your child navigate through these waters. Um, they do start to compare themselves to other students and with them being in athletics, you know, how, how am I in sports? Um, am I, you know, I'm out in their popularity. Um, and this was a hard one for me, but being embarrassed by their parents in front of other students. I remember it really, it hurt my, it hurt my heart whenever my child was like, no mom. And you know, they, you know, kind of like, mm -mm, leave me alone. <laughs> but, but they do at this stage, they do want to um, try to have that independence. So, I mean, if they do express that, just know that this is part of that age. Um, just talk to them about it later. Another big thing that happens here at the junior high, this age of students is puberty. Um, their body starts to go through a lot of changes um, they'll start to have pimples. They get concerned about dressing out in PE. Um, and then also something that we need you to help partner with us is have those conversations with your, with your child about peer pressure, you know, things, smoking, vaping, drinking, um, any kind of drugs. I mean, have those, have those tough conversations with your child um, and that will help prepare them if they ever do face these issues. But please know that we are here at the junior high to help you if there's anything that we can do. So recognize their fears, offer them support, tell them, tell them that you're there for them, reassure that your child, but make sure to listen to them. Um, be positive about what lies ahead because they will follow your lead and if they see that you have a positive outlook on things, then they will, they will tend to follow your lead with that and also have a positive outlook. Um, hold your child accountable. 
Um, they're going to make mistakes. Um, use those as teachable moments and give them the opportunity to make decisions. At the junior high, we do encourage the students to advocate for themselves because it's important to learn that skill now so that in the future they, they do feel empowered to speak up and allow them, like I said, the freedom to make those mistakes. This is how they learn. And mistakes are proof that they are trying. And correcting the mistakes, that's the proof that they are growing. So just keep that in mind. Use, use those things as teachable moments. And just know that, that mistakes are proof that they are trying. So the course selection process, that is a great opportunity for your child to make those decisions with your guidance. Myself and the other counselor, Ms. Garcia, we will be visiting the elementary schools on April the 8th and the 9th. The students will be given a brochure to take home. And that brochure has a description of the electives that are offered for seventh graders. Your child is going to receive their course selection sheet from their school counselor on April the 12th. This is a sample of what it looks like. And they have a total, students like I said before, have a total of eight classes at the junior high for seventh grade. And it is made up of four core classes. There are two required, two required classes, lead worthy in PE or athletics. And then they get two elective classes. Like I said, that's a total of eight. So their, high, their uh, counselor will be giving it to them on April the 12th. So let's take a closer look at the required course section. So you can see in here that it, it has the four core classes and then it's broke, their choice is either academic or honors. So for example, on the language arts, they would need to pick, do they want to take the academic or on level or honors, which is the advanced class. Now note on the math and science courses, there are prerequisites to those two classes. And so with that being said, in math and science, they would have to currently be in the advanced classes this year to take the honors classes in grade seven. So to, to, for the mathematics, if they're currently in the advanced for honors math, then they will be eligible to take the honors class in grade seven. All right, and the same thing with seventh grade honors science. Um, language arts and history, there's not a prerequisite to those two classes. Um, so you can pick academic or the honors level. Everyone is required to take our lead worthy class. Um, we're excited about that class and this is basically what it says. It teaches them how to be a leader. Um, and they will be actively involved in different kinds of projects and so forth. And we're excited to have that class on this campus. Um, like I said, this helps teach them how to speak, how to prepare to be a productive citizen. And the other required elective is either athletics or PE, but not both. So the conversation that you need to have with your child is, do you want to be in athletics or PE? They cannot be in both classes. They only get one class. Now, the athletics, to be in athletics, just know that they have to be in a sport. There's going to be some required paperwork that will have to be filled out, such as a physical and so forth. But the coaches will notify you about that. And athletics, it is a year commitment. When they are in office, they will be doing strength and conditioning training. Um, the girls coaches, um, there might be a buyout for the team, but if so, they will be notifying you. So if you do choose athletics, just, just know that you will probably be notified in the future regarding if there's going to be a tryout or not, and then any kind of forms that need to be filled out through the athletic department. All right, so here is a closer view of the elective courses that are offered to seventh graders. They will have two elective classes that they take at the junior high, but we do ask that they rank the top three choices 
with number one being the course that they want the most. We do try our very best to give the students their first and second choice, but if for some reason, if we cannot, we will go to their third choice. We do want to give them a class that they would like to be in. So that's why we do ask them to give us three choices. Um, and know that this information, we do use this to set our master schedule. And so with that being said, we want them to choose wisely because they may not be able to change their classes in the, um, when the school year starts because based off of cl uh, classes and the class size. So please talk to them and um, help them choose the top three that they would like and the top two will be the ones that we will try to give to them. If you want to be in band, make sure to make that your number one choice. Just know that um, there will be the, um, the whole instruments. I know that could, that's an investment. So if you want to be in band, make sure to make that your uh, one of your top choices. And just as I said before, remember, this is just a sample of the official registration form. And because we do use that, we would like uh, to set our master schedule. We would like to have the students to sign off and the parent to sign off. You will also notice on this screen that says click the link below to view elective course videos. Once this is shared, you can come back and click on that link and you'll be able to see um, videos about the different electives that are offered here at the junior high for seventh grade. In addition, you can get more information regarding the courses. It can be found also on the live link once this is, um, is shared, or you can go to the Splendor Junior High website under the counselor tab and you can view the um, course description guide. Once again, these, the course selection forms, they're gonna be given to the students on the 12th. They will have one week to complete the forms, get them signed and turned back in to their teacher or their counselor on their campus by April the 16th. That is the due date, April the 16th. Here is the contact information for myself and also for Ms. Garcia. The counselor secretary registrar, Ms. Hernandez, that is her um, telephone number here to the school. If you have a question, please call her and she will set up a meeting with either myself or Ms. Garcia. At this time, we are going to stop the recording.